It's July 2024 and I just got my newest overdrive pedal, but this one's a little bit different because I actually had to order this one way back in 2018. You all know it, it's the Analog Man King of Tone pedal. Almost six years have gone by and I finally got my pedal after getting on the list all that time ago. Is it worth it? Is it worth the money? Is it worth the wait for the sounds? Well, I absolutely think it is with my limited experiences of it so far. And what this video is going to be is me giving you my six reasons in honor of those six years as to why I think the King of Tone is still worth your time in 2024 and beyond. Reason number one, sounds. It's a fantastic sounding pedal. You can't get away from that. Now, of course, it's not as unique or as groundbreaking as it was back in the day because every man and his dog has made a version of this pedal. You can buy clones for 20% of the price that sound very, very similar indeed. And I happen to own one, for example, the Joyo King of Kings. That's a really good pedal, but this is something different. It does sound fantastic. It's a wonderful drive for so many different things. It's a dual overdrive too, of course. And well, for me, as soon as I turned it on with all the dials set to 12 o'clock and a little bit of a volume push, I realized that I was getting an amazing, transparent, clean boost. And it can do way more than clean boosts, of course. It sounds fantastic for edge of breakup tones. It's amazing for my beloved indie rock sounds as well. It's fantastic for classic rock. And with both sides active together, it's great for heavier rock stuff too. And that was all through a clean amplifier. Go to the dirty channel of your amp and you can use it as a fantastic boost as well. And being as it's such a great transparent pedal too, I find that the King of Tone is a great option for stacking with other drives. And those few tones were just me scraping the surface of the King of Tone, by the way. I really haven't got into all of the dials or the internal dip switches or anything like that yet. That's what I've got so far, pretty much with everything almost at 12 o'clock as well. So you can see just how many decent sounds are in this pedal. And by the way, all of the tones you just heard were played with the PJD York Standard, which is an England made T-type of guitar. More information and a full detailed review and demo of that guitar is there if you'd like to watch that. So the sounds are fantastic and point two is the versatility of the King of Tone. It can do so many different kinds of overdrive and what makes it especially versatile is the fact that its transparency means that it's going to sound fantastic with any kind of guitar or amp that you run it into. It really can help you take your setup to the next level without altering the bass tonal character of your beloved guitar or your beloved amp tone. So it's a fantastic option there as well and of course it's 
got two sides, so you can run one side on its own, you can run the other side on its own, or you can run them together. It's a hugely versatile overdrive pedal. It's two in one and more than that. Number three is the build quality. This is really important, especially given the price that you pay for this pedal, and it is really, really solid. Doesn't feel like it's gonna break anytime soon. Feels like it could survive a lifetime of use on the road as well, although I'm not quite sure yet if I would subject it to putting it on a live pedal board or anything like that. But we know that Analog Man used the best parts, the best components for these pedals as they should, and that's part of why this pedal has become so iconic. And it feels so much better than some of the cheaper, more plasticky clones of this very pedal that you can find elsewhere. So build quality, a great thing, and you would expect it at this price point. That's not to say that it's better than any of the other similarly priced pedals that you can buy these days, but it is very, very high quality, and that is a very cool selling point to have as well. Point four, this is one of those all in your head sort of things, but it feels great to finally own this pedal and I somehow feel like I'm a better guitarist when I'm playing it. I'm sure you all know that kind of a feeling with certain pieces of gear. This pedal really is though, it's the equivalent of something like a 59 Les Paul or a 52 Tele or an old Black Flag Marshall or a pre-war Martin acoustic or something like that. It's one of those icons of the modern world of guitar gear. That could be the fault of the internet, of course, but it feels fantastic to finally own it and to play it. And of course, having this pedal means that you also join the likes of so many well-known players who've had one on their boards over the years as well. And I'm just gonna read from a list on the internet that I've found, and we've got people like John Mayer, Noel Gallagher, John Petrucci, Gary Clark Jr., Jay Maskis, Lee Ronaldo, Scott Holliday, Mick Jones, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Jason Isbell, and so on, and so on, and so on. And add to that all of the YouTubers worth their salt who play guitar for YouTube as well. They all use it, they all love it, and there's a reason for that. So that's a great reason to have the king of tone for yourself as well. You feel like you're in great company, and you feel like you're owning a genuine piece of guitar gear history. And point five is kind of related to that. It's the waiting and the excitement and the anticipation with this pedal. Now, six years is a very long time to wait indeed, but there are some advantages to that. You can research the pedal, find out how best you're going to use it. What you can also do is put aside a dollar or a euro or a pound or one unit of your local currency per day or per week or whatever, and you're easily going to have enough by the time the pedal is actually ready for you to pay for it. Now, I've been really anticipating this pedal for so long, and of course, I could have gone on the used market and paid over double the price for one of these, but I decided to wait and I'm really, really happy that I did. And as I got closer and closer to reaching the top of the list and being able to place my order, well, the excitement truly mounted. I do have to admit that after my name got to the top of the list and I received the email from Analog Man saying I could now order, I waited a couple of months inexplicably to place my order. But there you go, that's the way we are sometimes. So that was point five. And the final point is the one that I wanted to leave till the end because it's one that I don't want to entertain but it is an advantage to owning the King of Tone if this is your thing. The resale value on it is going to be great. I look at used prices for the King of Tone quite a lot because I'm a sad, sad man in that respect. And you can instantly take this pedal and flip it the next day for over twice what you paid for it, maybe even three times, which I don't recommend. Buy this pedal, use it, keep it, play it, love it, make music with it. But if you ever need to sell it, rest assured that you won't lose any money on it whatsoever. And you'll probably earn a bit of it too. I mean, you've waited a long time for the privilege, so don't sell it, just keep it. It's a fantastic, fantastic thing. So those are six reasons why I think that the King of Tone is a pedal that you should definitely be investigating in 2024 and beyond. My conclusion would be that I've only scraped the surface of this pedal so far. And there are downsides to it as well. You know, it's expensive, you do wait a long time. It's just an overdrive pedal at the end of the day, but the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages in my opinion. Should you get yourself on the list? I absolutely think you should. You never know, they won't be making these pedals forever because not all of the parts will be available in unlimited quantities. Is the pedal living up to my expectations so far? Absolutely 100%. More content to come with the King of Tone on my channel. Let me know what you'd like to see me do with it. Should I test it out with all my different guitars and pickup types? Should I try it with different amplifiers? Should I test it against other overdrive pedals, including a few clones of the King of Tone? Let me know your thoughts on this pedal down there in the comments. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. It would make my day if you're still around, if you wanted to give it a like, or maybe even subscribe to my channel because that really does help. But I've been Rich, this has been the King of Tone, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.